Hello everyone, I'm Dr. David Dobrikowski. I'm an associate professor here at the Walton College of Business, where I also serve as director of the Masters of Science for Supply Chain Management. I'm excited to be with you today because I'd like to talk to you a little bit about supply chain strategy. Strategy uh, is obviously a critical element in business. It drives decision making regarding how we allocate resources, who we hire, the resources we acquire in the first place, the suppliers that we select, it has you know, incredibly important implications for the success and or failure of our organization. Now, you're probably aware, of course, that uh, an organization has an overarching uh, business strategy, right? But then oftentimes within each functional area, we also have strategies that ultimately have to roll up and be consistent with uh, the firm's strategy. Supply chain is no different. So let's talk a little bit today about supply chain strategy. So, you know, as soon as I start to describe these concepts, right, inevitably people will say, oh, but we do things a little bit differently. And that's absolutely true, okay? So let's start with that understanding that uh, as, you know, researchers and as scientists, right, we study phenomenon. And in order to study phenomenon, we have to develop and define variables and figure out how to measure what an organization is doing, right? And how this organization may differ from this other organization. Uh, as soon as we do that, we create boundaries, right? Uh, you know, we say, you know, this is this thing and this is that thing. In other words, they're not the same thing. The truth is, as soon as we, you know, start to define these variables, create these, you know, definitional boundaries, a lot of folks, a lot of organizations will operate right in the center. Um, and they'll be taking practices from one another. So I just want to start with that caveat. And my goal here today is to, scri to describe for you one, what supply chain strategy is, two, how we determine the proper supply chain strategy for organization, and three, how by understanding the environment within which we work in terms of what our competitive priorities are for our customers, what our product type is, we can determine which elements of which strategy are best for our organization as we develop our, uh, what is gonna be essentially known as a hybrid strategy. So let's start over here with an efficient strategy efficient right so we all know what efficient means right efficient means that we're trying to do things as you know cost effectively as we possibly can if you remember uh, Porter's grand uh, strategies right uh, he talked about the overarching business strategy as being a low-cost leader right low-cost leadership um, he also talked about a business strategy known as differentiation right differentiation. A differentiator now tries to create a product or a service that is different from, you know, other organizations, that's different from the mainstream and therefore can generate uh, more margin, right? So you can charge higher prices and create higher trade margins. Um, low cost types of providers don't always differentiate based on products, right? Um, but they differentiate based on their ability to drive uh, you know, extremely uh, low costs and in many cases value, right, uh, for uh, their customers. From a supply chain perspective, this translates into what we call an efficient uh, supply chain strategy, or over here, what you might think of as an agile uh, type of supply chain strategy. Okay, well, how do I know what is best? Well, many times these decisions are driven by uh, our product type. What type of product do we have? So efficient supply chain strategies are often uh, you know, in alignment with what we call functional products. Functional products, right? So what is a functional product? Well, when you think about a functional product, think about, um, well, let me describe some of the characteristics for you, right? Uh, when we think about a functional product, uh, the first thing that we uh, tend to think about are product life cycles that tend to be long, right? Maybe two years plus. In other words, the product doesn't change very much. Uh, when it does change, the innovation tends to be not radical, but incremental changes, uh, right? Um, <clears throat> so think about, for example, I always like to think about like handheld tools, like a Black & Decker drill, right? Or um, other, uh, you know, tools in, in the category. What was the last, you know, innovation on the Black & Decker drill? Right? Maybe the, the light over top of the, the drill, perhaps, right? Nothing that is like incredibly revolutionary. Right, uh, there are more incremental uh, types of changes. As a result of this, the contribution margin per unit 
right, tends to be fairly low. In other words, we don't tend to make, you know, a, a great deal of margin on each unit. That's not to say that low-cost uh, organizations that run efficient supply chain strategies don't make money. They're exceedingly successful, right? But they do so based on volume, right? So volume becomes important, or in other words, from a supply chain perspective, what we think of as inventory turns, sometimes thought of as uh, velocity uh, in the supply chain. Um, also, in an effort to, you know, maintain efficiency, right, we tend to offer not a ton of product variety. So product variety tends to be a little bit on the lower side, right? How many different types of Black & Decker drills uh, are there, right? Uh, not, not a ton. But because we have a long product life cycle, we've collected a lot of data about our sales over a long period of time, we tend to have high volume of sales, which is good from a data perspective, right? We tend to uh, have low variety, right? This tends to be a very, very predictable type of environment. And because this environment tends to be predictable, a lot of times we like to say that the forecasting error tends to be low. So we have low forecasting error, maybe 10%, 15% uh, forecasting error. So if you're the director or the vice president of uh, demand planning or forecasting, um, you're going to have a lot uh, more confidence, right, uh, in your forecast. You're going to feel a lot better about yourself as a human being. It's a little bit, forecasting is a little bit like being in sales, right? You have to be prepared to be wrong. And uh, it can be kind of demoralizing, right? So just a joke, right? So, uh, you know, if you're going to be concerned about that, um, this is kind of the environment uh, that uh, you want to, uh, you know, you want to work in. And then oftentimes, sometimes the production lead times um, can also be uh, a bit long. Right, uh, as we try to uh, strive for efficiencies, in some cases we'll use um, batch production depending on uh, other factors that we'll discuss later. So this is one type of supply chain strategy, the efficient uh, supply chain strategy that lines up with um, low cost leadership from a porter uh, grain strategy perspective. Another strategy um, that is more oriented towards firms that are interested in differentiation is what we call agile, right, agile. Now agile is the opposite of efficient, right? So when we think about product life cycle, we think about very short uh, product life cycles, right? So it might be six months. Think about like, you know, an Apple iPhone or something, right? Product life cycles tend to be very, very short. However, my contribution margin per unit tends to be very high, right? I make a lot of money on each unit that I sell. And because of that, while I would love to have high volumes, I don't always have high volumes, right? Sometimes we'll have um, you know, low volumes or medium volume uh, sales, and as a result of that, um, you know, when we think about metrics, back to what's important uh, to us as an organization, metrics like inventory turns might be much less important here than they are, uh, you know, to a, an efficient organization or, or running an efficient supply chain strategy. Here, many times, uh, not always, but many times, product variety tends to be high. We're very customer oriented here. We want to be very responsive to our customer needs. So we want to be able to provide a high variety uh, of products. And part and parcel to this, while we've done a great job in you know, supply chain and operations, frankly, over the years of, of reducing trade-offs um, you know, through uh, lean types of approaches and so forth, the reality is um, that uh, you know, there is still a cost trade-off. If I have higher variety, you know, there's a good chance I'll still have higher production costs and so forth. Now, if you think about this, right, I have short product life cycles, so I don't get to collect much data uh, on my products. It's a volatile type of environment, right? Because of this, my forecasting error um, tends to be uh, very high, right? So here, these organizations might, you know, crank 50% uh, uh, forecasting error. It can be a tough place to do forecasting. Uh, and then finally, my production lead times um, have to be um, generally pretty short or at least shorter. Uh, to try to be responsive uh, to the marketplace. Now, <clears throat> what are the implications of this, right? You might be asking me, Dr. Dobrikowski, so what? Who cares, right? Well, the so what, the who cares, um, you know, comes, you know, to the, uh, the notion that how I execute these strategies and how I ultimately deliver on my customers, uh, you know, uh, desires or my competitive dimensions um, are impacted by the decisions I make in the supply chain. So if the overarching goal of, of agility, right, is to be, you know, very responsive, very sensitive to my customers' needs, 
um, then I have to think about how I do that, right? And there are two kind of strategies that fall under Agile for you to consider. The first is what we call a responsive, responsive supply chain strategy. A responsive supply chain strategy, and by the way, these Agile supply chain strategies are driven by innovative products, right? Innovative products. Functional products for efficient, innovative products for Agile. My responsive supply chain strategy is executed by my manufacturing method, my method of manufacturing. So you may have heard of mass customization, right? The ability to manufacture a high variety of goods or highly customized goods at delivery lead times, costs, quality, and so forth that are comparable to mass produced goods. Well, the way that we do that is by using a, a manufacturing technique called postponement. In other words, we postpone the customization of the product as far into the manufacturing process uh, as possible. Right? The way that we do that, if you think about like an automobile, is to manufacture a base model, a core model. Right? And all of those core models are the same right? until we begin the customization. So perhaps you've driven an automobile where in the instrument panel uh, there was a plastic cap. And you might have wondered, huh, I wonder why there's that plastic cap. Right? What, what is that? Well, that was a feature that another vehicle had. Or if you look at the front fascia of an automobile, many times you'll see plastic caps on the front fascia where fog lamps right, uh, uh, could have been right, or are for other uh, you know, uh, uh, option packages. Well, this is how we manufacture the same automobile. We, end, we ultimately, through postponement, are able to compress the lead time that we're able to respond to a customer, right? Because what we do is we manufacture that core model, and then when we receive an order from a dealer, boom, we start to pull it uh, through the uh, supply chain, through the manufacturing process, uh, responding to, uh, you know, our customer's needs, which in that case, you know, is probably a dealer order. So this is um, achieved through mass customization or the method of manufacturing. But wait a second. Not all products are what we call modularly designed. In other words, they're not assembled, you know, by a grouping of uh, assemblies, subassemblies, and components, and so forth. Right? They're not modularly designed. Many products are fairly integratively designed, or what we call integrative design. Uh, think about again, like an iPhone. Sure, I don't think anyone on the planet would disagree that an iPhone is an innovative product. It certainly meets these criteria. However, it's an integrative design. There aren't that many different memory configurations that you can have. There aren't that many different colors that you can have. Now, we personalize our iPhone, of course, right, by installing apps. But the actual iPhone itself, when we take it out of the box, um, is fairly integratively designed. So how in the world can a company like Apple achieve short product life cycles, high contribution margin, be responsive to its customers when you know, estimating demand is difficult? How can we do this? Well, we do this by using a, what we call a risk hedging, a risk hedging supply chain strategy. Now, a risk hedging supply chain strategy is for integrative designs, that's an arrow, integrative products, uh, and it's done um, using inventory. So it's an inventory intensive strategy. Uh, in other words, we simply have to take on more inventory uh, in this type of environment in order to be responsive to our customers. Well, wait a second. How in the world can we do that? It's incredibly expensive, right, to keep inventory, particularly finished goods inventory uh, like an iPhone. Well, we can afford to do it because we have a higher contribution margin per unit, right? Um, we have to because we have high forecasting here, right? So if we're going to be responsive to that uh, and not miss sales, and we're going to have to have buffer inventory or higher inventory levels, right? So um, that's a little bit about the two types of agility. One, responsiveness, and two, uh, risk hedging. Well, wait a second. So like I said a few moments ago or at the beginning of this uh, you know, video, uh, the reality is most of us live somewhere in the middle, right? And that's very true because if you think about all of this stuff that uh, you know, encapsulates all these factors that ultimately encapsulate an efficient supply chain strategy. And if you think about all these factors that ultimately encapsulate a uh, agile supply chain strategy, the truth is most of us live right here.
<laughs> we live right in the center, right? Um, so what's really important for us is to recognize these factors. We're like physicians, right, uh, for businesses. We're like supply chain physicians. And that our job is to diagnose the environment within which we operate. What's happening with our product life cycle? First off, do we have a functional product or an innovative product, right? How does that impact our product life cycle? What does that mean for our contribution margin per unit? How about the volume that we're running or the velocity that we're running through the supply chain? How about the variety of products that we offer? Do we have to offer a lot of products or not so many products? How about our forecasting error? Do we operate in a predictive environment where, you know, we can, or a predictable environment where we can be pretty certain, you know, in our manufacturing uh, plans? Or, um, you know, do we ultimately operate in a very unpredictable environment? These are all factors that we've got to consider when we're developing our supply chain strategy and ultimately taking practices from agile approaches and practices from efficient approaches to develop our hybrid strategy which is ultimately what this is called, it's hybrid land. Or if you really want to impress your friends, a legile supply chain strategy. This influences not just how we work, um, but it also influences the decisions that we make uh, relative to uh, supplier selection, resource allocation, and so forth. I hope you're thinking a little bit differently now, and I hope you've enjoyed this uh, brief discussion of supply chain strategy. I look forward to seeing you again, and woo pig suey.